you know, getting really good at golf, and hopefully that's why you're here, is to get better at golf and become a good golfer, that eventually is going to involve your ability to learn how to hit different shots. So right after this, let's talk about the nine different ball flights and how you too can learn how to hit all of them with relative ease when you know just a couple of tricks. Stay tuned. So my mentor, Mike Austin, he's a legendary teacher, long drive pioneer, amazing golf swing, but he used to talk about how he would hit shots uh, with his Hans. Playing golf is just throwing the club around the circle with the Hans. So he would say that in his Scottish brogue. But he's right in that you can hit all nine ball flights just by the slight tweaking of your hand action at the bottom of the swing. So first, what are the nine ball flights? Well, you've got anywhere from straight to draw to fade. That's three. Then you've got low, medium, and high. So you have three possibilities times three possibilities or combinations gives you nine total combinations you can hit. Kind of like a tic-tac-toe diagram. You've got your low draw, your high fade, your medium fade, your low fade, your high straight, etc., etc. So nine different ball flights. And I believe you can teach yourself how to hit these shots pretty easily by knowing a couple tricks. All right, first let's talk about fading and drawing. So to fade the ball, it's very easy to do that simply by slightly underdoing the rotation or the pronation of the right forearm coming into the ball. So this would be like shaking hands. This would be the way I'd hit it straight with my wrist, my arm bones stacked on top of each other. Now, if I want to hit a fade, I'm going to go through the ball in a slightly supinated position this way. And if I want to draw the ball, I'm going to go through the ball and I'm going to use my hands and forearms and I'm going to slightly over pronate uh, this way as I go through the ball. Let's see it from this angle now. Here's a fade action. Slightly underdoing the pronation. And here's a draw action. Slightly overdoing the forearm turning over, which is pronation, before impact, just like that. All right, let's give both of those shots a try. First, we're going to fade one by under rotating the forearms. There she comes around, nice little fade. Okay, now on the draw, I'm gonna purposely over pronate the right forearm before I strike the ball. That'll look something like this. Well, I think I knocked the stick down with that one. Okay, now on to the low and the high shot. The low and the high. So you've got your normal swing. Hopefully that hits the ball pretty medium. Now the mechanism I'm going, I'm going to use again in the right wrist and forearm to trigger a lower shot is simply this. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna hold this right wrist in extension or bent back like this just a little bit longer before I throw it through. That'll give me, watch this position at impact, a more forward leaning shaft, and I'm gonna slightly de-loft the club, maybe one club from a seven down to a six, and that should allow me to hit the ball lower. Let's see if I can hit a little stinger here. All right, so that one launched at about 13 or 14 degrees, uh, a lot lower than my usual 18 to 19 degree launch angle with the seven iron. So I was able to knock it down almost to like five iron trajectory, really, just by controlling a slight delay in the flap of the right forearm, just to hear it impact and flapping just after. Now, conversely, to hit a high trajectory shot, like you're coming into a 
a hard green with a front flag, or maybe you just have to get up quick over a tree. Uh, I'm going to do the opposite of the low shot. I'm actually going to flap my hand a little early, and I'm going to try to arrive at the ball with my right wrist in a slightly flexed position like this, so bent forward just like that. And hopefully it's going to go a bit higher than normal. Let's see if I can do it. And looking at the stats on that one, you can see that I launched that one at 22 and a half degrees. So that's at least a full club higher than I'd normally launch a seven iron, 18 or 19 degrees is normal, 22 and a half. Probably what I'd launch an eight iron and maybe, maybe between an eight and a nine iron. So quite a high parachute style shot that would come down and land very softly on a hard green. All right, so we have our basic motions to fade the ball, draw the ball, hit it low, hit it high. All we have to do now is figure out how to combine two of those, or up to two of those, in order to hit all nine flights. For example, if I wanted to hit a low fade, the fade I'm going to arrive at impact slightly in this position, and then for the low part I'm going to have my wrist slightly pinned back. So supinate, pin the wrist back, and wait a little longer to let it go, and you should be able to hit a low fade. If you want to hit a high draw, well there's our high position and here's our draw position. So it's going to be flapping early as you're turning over the wrist just like that. We should be able to get a nice high draw out of it. Now of course it's going to take practice. So this seems really complicated but if you could just learn one or two of these shots it could be very handy in either getting you out of trouble, let's say out of the trees and curving it around the tree line back down the fairway or possibly around a dog leg so you can hit it in the fairway a little bit more often without trying to cut the corner or lay up. So you can practice all these motions at home with no golf ball. You can just practice holding that right wrist and letting it go late for the low shot. You can practice supinating it a little bit and going through for the fade just like that and experiment with it a little bit on the range but don't try to use it on the course until you've practiced it enough for it to be pretty much second nature. And conversely if you have a problem with ball flight of any one of these nine windows you can use these techniques to kind of neutralize it back again. So if you're hitting it a little too high you can practice hitting some balls with your wrist holding in this position a little longer and hopefully bring it back down to neutral again. So not only learning how to hit trick shots but also how to learn how to troubleshoot your own pattern and fix it for the better. All right, I'm going to go back and work a little more on hitting the nine flights. I hope you'll give this a try. Report back to me in the comments below. Hey, I'm Steve. Thanks so much for watching. And as usual, I will either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.